Hey there, lovely soul. This is Infinity. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing at any point in this video when you think, hey, this chick is kind of cool. <laughs> or this really resonates with you. I hope that it does. Um, it is June 29th, 2021. Energies have been really interesting these last seven to 10 days, but truly the whole month of June. And um, I have not been around nearly as much. And when I have been, it's been just audio. And that's just the way I've been guided, what I've been feeling. Uh, not a whole lot other than that I can say about it other than maybe um, there's like a cocoon phase that needed to happen because I'm finding myself going live on Instagram the last two days and I really feel I'm going to be doing that more. So if you want to join me live daily um, for Oracle messages, meditations, question and answer type things, um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of loosey goosey at this point, but I really feel that that's coming and a lot more meditations are going to be coming out and there's just going to be a, lo a lot more um a lot more of me coming out and i hope that um you join me for all of that as you're guided okay so let's get into what we're doing here tonight today whenever it is that you see this it is currently so 717 here on the 29th um in the pacific it is uh tuesday i have in my hand the fairy oracle by brian froud um this is no joke fairy energy connection and messages um and they don't come out often. However, the Fae... Ha oh, we have a stowaway from the other deck in there. Uh, however, the Fae... I'm really curious as to what that... Car Oop, another one. Oh, there's a few here. Okay, so this is probably... Yeah, we're not working with that deck as far as I know. Let me just make sure... they. They were neck like on top of each other, so if they have a few stowaways. Interesting. Okay. I'm <laughs> like, they're from the same um the same person that both Brian Froud, but that's a different deck. That's the Heart of Fairy, and this is the Fairy's Oracle. So anyhow, and I want to make sure I have them all here. Let me just verify. Yeah, okay. Alright, so uh, the fairies have been coming out and about more, and so have the mermaids. So my last few um, videos or podcasts have been mermaid related or fairy related, pretty heavy in that in that regard. Um, so I was guided to pull out this deck. <laughs> And we're going to get a card here in a second. And then we're going to get into the, the, the meat of the video. And that is this, um, channeling, if you will. I don't know what else to call it. It's something that came through me that I wrote and it's, about fear and it's pretty um dark and intense but there it's just very true and um it's i wrote it on the 17th of june it just started coming and i just I, it's decently long i don't know how long it is in like minutes but written it's kind of it's not super long, but it's like, oh, this kind of goes on. <laughs> but it just kept coming, and it is what it is, and it's meant to shine a light on fear in a way that most of us don't think of it. Okay, so that's coming up. Let's get into the oracle and see what we get. What, co what comes out? 
Um, because I find it really interesting. I'm guided. I thought I was just going to start the video with fear. And then it was like, nope. Fairy. Fairy messages first. So here we are. I just do as I'm told. <laughs> I'm a good soldier. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <sighs> he of the fiery sword. Card number four. Wow, this energy is big time today. This is also um, very much emperor ener energy very much archangel michael energy and this is would be the fourth time today no the third time today right yes the third time today that i have this energy coming through so first in my live if you watch the live from today on youtube um the emperor comes out and then in a private read with a client the emperor came out it was the very last card and then right now this is the he of the fiery sword it's not they're they're not the same but you'll see i'm going to read this and i even have written here michael um let's see if you can see that see that okay so here we go He of the fiery sword, the active principle, spiritual will, justice, protection. When the song comes into any of the manifest worlds, this world or fairy or another, it first encounters two principles, sometimes called yin and yang or masculine and feminine or great god and great goddess. He of the fiery sword is the primary manifestation of the yang principle, action, will, movement, force, fire. We see him in many ways, each one an aspect of his total being. All of the great gods and protectors are aspects of this power. The fiery sword is the archetype of all magical and mundane swords and written upon the blade are the words, draw me not without cause nor return me without honor. I love that so much. Every time I read that, it makes me smile really big. <laughs> I just, it's so good. I'm going to say it again. Draw me without cause, nor return me without honor. A member of the Oracle group notes, his fiery sword illuminates truth and dispels not truth. And she's talking about, I think they had like an online group about this Oracle um, deck. And that's what somebody said. His fiery sword illuminates truth and dispels not truth, which is so beautiful for what we're going to get into here about fear. So like i couldn't have planned this better seriously it's so beautiful okay here we go and i think also that's why i love when i read that draw me without cause nor return me without honor it automatically implies this the the truth not your will not what you want not what's comfortable not what feels good but the truth. Okay. We call upon the master of the fairy sword when we have difficult things to do, when we need to take action that is going to require much of us. 
both in will and in compassion. Another of the oracle group reminds us, he will do what needs to be done with love. When looking at this card, my neighbor saw it not as a sword, but as a feather of light. He saw it as a symbol of the ability to fly, to rise above things. An Oracle group member saw it as someone reaching up, ascending, surrounded, surrounded by multiple reflections and filled with light and power. To understand this card more fully, please read the comments on She of the Grotch, card five. They are the two halves of the same hole. And let me turn this up. Now I can't even remember if I showed you earlier. If I didn't, I apologize. Sometimes I get away with, I, <laughs> I get right into stuff and I forget to show you guys the cards. So here it is. He of the fiery sword. Wait, let me, there. Okay. And what they have for starter reading, so like the base reading, um, the presence of the fiery swords master in a reading can indicate that there is or there is a need for clear and focused will and a determination to carry through on decisions even if effort is required. Or he can tell us that such will and strength is present in regard to the issues under consideration. We need to consider how he is expressing his will and strength and how that expression may be enhanced or improved. It is this singer's energy that enables us to burst the bonds of an outgrown way of being and move on to the next level he indicates that this is a time to take action based on clear spiritual will his presence indicates great strength and great potential for good it also reminds us that if we call upon him we will receive assistance the presence of this card in a reading radiates strength and willpower to the cards around it and if it was in reverse, it says, like all the singers, that this card does not have a reverse meaning as such because he of the fiery sword is present in full measure throughout the universe on all levels. Reversal here speaks of an archetypal energy blocked or unaccepted by the quotient but, or another involved in the issue. Look at the cards around it to see what may be causing this. When he of the fiery sword is reversed, the question need we need to ask ourselves is how may I f feel strength and will in my life and allow the vital force to flow through. Okay. And then there's this quote down here um, by Brian. It says, fairies cannot be pinned down to a page, a list, a single definition. To grasp their elusive nature requires direct experience personal engagement <laughs> that's so true okay so once again he of the fiery sword and this is super just wow when it comes and you can see if you know anything about archangel michael he's known for strength or willpower for protection for that that real um motivational kind of energy uh and he's just come through just really a lot today um it's just really i love it <laughs> i i love it um honestly i do and it's really perfect for what we're gonna get into here with fear but i am being guided to to give us that balance because it does say to fully understand he of the fiery sword well we would understand she of the crotch and let me see if i can find that card so you can better see it um Nope. A lot of the singers, they have the same kind of, there it is. Okay. So this is her card. So 
So it's more of this like vessel energy. So it's like that, um, that cup kind of energy versus this, this sword is this, you know, a sword straight up, um, that sort of thing. And they both represent that kind of, you know, the phallic, you know, straight with the male and then the, the vessel, the roundness with the female. So that, so they have that going on. All right. So I'm going to read about the number five card, the receptive principle, nurturing fertility. This is the great goddess, the many named mother of all and all God goddesses and attributes or aspects of her. Uh, her cup, the crotch, <laughs> crouch. I know I'm not saying that right. C R U A C H crouch overflows with bounty for all. She is the yin energy of the universe, nurturing, compassionate, and wise. She gives form and brings into manifestation the will and the life force of he of the fiery sword. His is the intention, the action, and hers is the manifest reality. In a sense, she is the crotch holding all the worlds within her being. One Oracle group member saw the grotch as a great bowl, like a scrying tool for seeing past, present, or future potential, but filled with energy instead of water. Within it, he saw a tower with a moon above it, a farmhouse, and many other bits and pieces of our world. He felt that if you drop something in the water, these things would scatter out and become reality archetypes manifesting everywhere he said she is the woman who dreams and her dreams are the worlds and all that is in them looking at this card another oracle group member notes what i see here is the energy of being held lovingly in the palm of the of the hand of the great goddess followed by a relaxed sigh and release she of the Grotch is the holder of all of our sorrows and all of our joys. Her Grotch, the miraculous chalice, is the womb of birth and the cauldron of rebirth, the chalice of healing, the container holding the germinated seed. She is the body, the soul shrine that holds the spirit and keeps it from being lost or dissipated in a formless fog. She is pattern and form in the abstract and in the specific. Within her, we take form, grow, achieve fulfillment, and let go of that form to move on to the next phase of our being. All of the universe, each individual particle, every being is cherished by her. And the basic starter reading. She of the Grotch may indicate a form of pregnancy, a necessary time of nurturing and development. We need to be open to her overflowing grace. She may also indicate a need to allow her nurturing grace to flow through us to others in the form of unconditional love and giving and spiritual healing. She tells us that of the need for unconditional receiving of making the best of what we are offered. She also reminds us that unbounded love and grace is ours, just waiting to be accepted. The presence of this card in a reading radiates comfort and nurturing to the cards around it. Um, okay, just wanted to check something. And reversed... Like he of the fiery sword and all of the other singers, she does not have a reverse meaning as such. She fills the universe and is available to all. Reversal here speaks of her ar archetypal energy blocked or unaccepted by the quotient or another involved in the issue. Read the cards around her to begin to understand the cause of this. When she of the grotch is reversed, the question we need to ask ourselves is how may I free this energy of acceptance and nurturing in my life to allow it to flow through me? That's so great. So there we go with he of the fiery sword and she, she of the grotch. Um, <clears throat> the yin and the yang principle of all that is he is the um the action the will the uh, the idea and she is the manifest reality 
very much it's like you think of man and woman they come together and they make love and he um implants her with this energy for life without it she would not be able to create life so that fiery energy comes in to the she the she takes it and multiplies it multiplies it multiplies it multiplies it and keeps fractaling out and multiplying and becoming a new um a new life in so many different stages before it that be that fetus become you know is born and this and this baby lives can live and a soul within it can have in the next chapter of its story so this is super powerful energy it's making me emotional <laughs> not the first time today <laughs> um together also i'm being guided to notice that th this is the four and the nine I mean, sorry, the four and the five that make the nine. And as light workers, we're referred to as the nines. And if that's something new to you or you need a refresher, go to my website, thehealingbutterfly.org to read about the nines. You can just go into the search bar and put nine or the nines and it'll populate and you can find it easily that way. If I forget to put the link in the description, because sometimes I do. So, so that is speaking to the, the universal connection of, of the, the incarnates, the, the higher level beings, the higher level souls who have been incarnated over and over and over again, who's gone through the process of living and dying in different lifetimes of going through that experience of being in the different realms, the hidden worlds, the different dimensions, depending on what you are at a soul base level, what your origin um, is, what your spark of life is kind of every, every, most souls are, have a very, you know, everything's a little different for everybody and in, in the process of all of that anyway. We have gone through that countless times, just a, a, a lot of times. And as such, the nines represent that, that end of cycle and that, that precipice for, for new and having gone through all of the stages. And I'm not saying you've had nine lives. Um, you've had more than that if you're a light worker. And in an or empath light worker, um, it's not all empaths like understand or identify as light workers yet or whatever, but they kind of are one and the same, um, consciously or not. So some light workers are very passive in what they do with their light work. They just their job is just to be them, live a life, radiate their 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 light, and do their life that way and some light workers are meant to do like really out there kind of stuff like yours truly um and so in both are equally as important let's just be clear about that okay so this whole nine thing with the light workers is really speaking to this this deep connection and understanding on a soul-based level like being like like highest level educationally that we can think of or know of in this reality. Like just think like, you know, I don't even know what it what it would be, you know, some type of science thing or or some some type of physics or science thing possibly or doctor type thing to to be like like the upper echelon of of a person who's done a lot of education and work and <clears throat> have a lot of experience doing what they're doing like that type of person so the nines are that type of person light workers are that type of, of of soul of person um directly related to this 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 um he and she yin and yang um god and goddess creators mother father god energy source however you want to title that and them um that works for you uh that's what this is as we just heard about so getting into what we're going to get into here about fear 
I find it so unbelievably perfect because if we channel in this energy that we just listened to, the what just came through for us with he of the fiery sword and she of the crotch and, and their energy together, and we hear about fear, it's really gonna it's really gonna work to, to show that contrast of, of energy, but also hopefully why it exists and and how to um empower yourself to really truth understand and take this in take this information in and see it from a different perspective so it empowers you motivates you fires you up as you go forward and especially as we get into this new month of july 2021 things are really going to start rocking and rolling now as far as what we're going to be getting into i am super excited about it but with a lot of change and movement adjustments and action comes um can come fear and and in so many different ways and so and so 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 many different ways and something to really think about and be aware of um how you feel what scares you what what you're afraid of and most of us just don't really quantify that we don't inventory that we don't think about it we don't see it in the different ways in which it manifests but it's important to as you go through your spiritual journey to really tap into this to this understanding and this energy okay so without further ado let's get into it i'm going to make that go away because it is really bright even though i'm not going to be looking there for a bit i'm going to be looking down here for the most part as i read this oh no where's my water okay oh it's right here i was like it has sworn i brought it And I usually put it there. Okay. <clears throat> so just take this in as I read this. And I'm being guided to just end the video um, pretty much when I'm done here. So you can just sit with it, listen to it, maybe reverse it, listen to it again. I'm going to try not to, you know, mess up too much as I go. <laughs> I'm going to try to flow here. Okay. So this is called fear. I am here to destroy you, to take away your happiness, to build up stories in your mind and take apart your heart. I like lies. I like what they do to your faith and confidence. I live to cause you pain and to twist the truth. I turn up into down and down into dust. I make you forget what you feel and believe what you're told. I use authority and the basics to keep you threatened. The more negative your mind, your thoughts, your heart and body, the more you bring it out in others. Working to keep yourselves powerless, whether you mean to or not. I plug myself into every thought with my manipulation and you let me because you're addicted to me. If you could see me for what I am, I'd never get away with anything and you would learn the truth. That I cannot, that cannot happen. That cannot happen. I live off you yet, like I said, I aim to destroy you. It is a thin needle to thread, I admit, but I nearly never lose. If I keep you occupied in things that do not exist, you'll be too distracted to see the truth. My favorite thing to do is to confuse you. I like turning you against yourself, making you question your intuition. I cast so many shadows, build up monsters in the dark, so the last thing you can see are those beings of the light who want to guide you away from me who aim to get in my way. It's a game, I admit it. You are nothing to me, and it's not exactly personal, but then again, it most certainly is. My biggest grievance against you is when you ignore me, push me away, and decide I'm nothing. That is very frustrating, and I cannot allow it to happen often. 
That is why I work so hard to multiply myself, infest your life at every single turn so you don't know what peace is, so you turn away from love, so you see every possible flaw, so you one way or another despise yourself and the world inside and out. I make it impossible to trust anyone bending the truth so your stories become your reality one way or another. At least I try very hard to. What makes life easy for me is that you don't actually need your reality to show proof of what I say. I just need to begin with a whisper and you take over for me. Making you feel jealous, seek revenge, and never forgive are also helpful allies in this war. You start to write stories that play into my every desire. You do what I say because I'm the one in control. Period. I keep you from your best life, from exploring, from expanding, from tapping into who you were destined to be. That is my job after all. That is my purpose to keep you from yours. Your purpose is important. My mission is to keep you away from it, from knowing your power while flexing mine every possible chance I get. Since I'm confessing as you sleep, the truth is that you're extremely powerful. Oh, the irony, if you only knew. You all are, and that's why you cannot learn the truth. That is why it's imperative to keep you from awakening, from figuring out the biggest secret of all. The funny thing is that I'm truly nothing. Rarely am I real, and when I am, I really usually help you. Yet, because you all believe in me, no matter what, and the stories I put into your head and heart, most of the time I don't actually need to be real. But I do come to life quite often, and I justify the multitudes of time that I am nothing. Every moment of every day, you keep me alive one way or another. So very many ways. Ironically enough, those who see me and know the truth are the ones that the rest of you turn against. The ones who try to lead you out of the darkness I create. I don't even exist unless you want me to. The ones you shun are the ones who try to tell you about the many layers of your reality, especially of what I really am. My very weakness is my greatest power, the fact that I'm pure illusion. Too bad I'm so good at what I do, so perfectly invisible yet all around, that to escape my web requires the desire to know the truth. And the fact is that you're like most, too comfortable with your story, no matter how miserable. And I like you miserable one way or another. There's just too many of my walls of illusion up for you to get around. And that's how we constructed it, you and me. And you don't want to go making a mess of things, trying to take them down on a quest for the truth. Now, do you? Of course not. Yours, fear. <sighs> so take that in and let it settle in your mind, your body, your heart and soul and spirit and think about what that means for you thanks for joining me until next time bye for now